Hello, everypony, and welcome to another spectacular episode of the Weekend Superhero. Every pony, I'm really. So mad about we're that. doing this that. Is the, oh, my first this? time back, and you start with that I, one. Oh, I got to be real with you guys. There are tons of horse puns loaded into here, so saddle up. Oh, come okay, on. You're to follow it <laughs> up John, one, come huh? correct. <laughs> Today is Friday, June 22nd, 2018. I'm Sean. Sitting with me always is Pat and Steve. Filling in for Darius, we have Darius. Hey. Holy I'm shit. I'm finally back. We found oh, another guy is. named Darius. It's the real Darius. <laughs> <laughs> I made it back to one. How is everyone today? You guys At the real on? Darius. I was better until you said hello, every pony. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> hey, do we have another pony here? <laughs> A special treat justifies here. <laughs> Fresh off a triple crown win. Here we go. Justify, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> <laughs> I think I broke everyone. <laughs> Steve, uh, Steve, shame. Well, I'm crying still. Okay, sorry. Steve, shameless plug. Who was our last guest on the show? It's not very shameless, but uh, on the last show, we had swingers Ben and Deidre Hartman. If you haven't listened, go back an episode and check it out. Uh, that's right. But our main topic is ponies. Main topic? Stop it. Uh, <laughs> I will I'm, I'm going to leave. Really? Seriously. Like, I'm almost out of here. I'm going to pull a Darius and not be on the podcast. Yeah. Hey, can if you have 13 or 14 more puns, I'm out of here. <laughs> hey, can I Griff God come back and fill in for me? But our main topic is a relatively new phenomenon. So when you were a kid, hopefully you remember running downstairs on Saturday morning to hop on the couch in your onesie to watch your favorite morning cartoons. Though most of them were filled with unnecessary revenge-fueled violence, some of them were aired to dole out valuable life lessons. But the choice was either up to you or your restrictive, overbearing parents. But when you did... Or parent. Parent, excuse me. And I just had the one. Hashtag oh, that's right. dad. That's right. <laughs> but thanks for bringing it up. <laughs> but when you did find that one, you never missed it. Turtle power. <laughs> All right, now I want pizza. That, yeah. <laughs> that was, of course, the theme song to the 1980s hit cartoon, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. That was my personal favorite. Saying it right now, Michelangelo was the coolest turtle. Oh, Clearly. Course, come on, Donatello. Come on. Why? Because do, he, he was blue. Because he does machines. Because he was blue. <laughs> Donatello is purple. <laughs> oh, blue. Remember about Leonardo is blue. Oh, yeah. Um, see, now you ruined Donatello had that dumb staff. So I love that show. I bought all the merchandise. Uh, Darius, let me ask you an equestrian. Ask Stop you, it! Ask you in a question. Hey, hey. Stop it. Hey. Darius, unplug his microphone. Yeah, god damn it. Is that Griff guy back? Let me ask you a question. <laughs> Darius, so you asked me here. Darius, what was your favorite cartoon growing up? So, my favorite cartoon, I'll have to go with the Rugrats. Rugrats, fantastic. Tommy Pickles. Tommy Pickles. Everybody loves Tommy Pickles. <laughs> Steve, how about you? I was a huge fan. So, like, I played soccer and had T-ball when I was younger. I would get done with that, go back to my grandmother's house. Put on Saturday, mark, uh, Saturday morning cartoons and watch the X Men. X Men, X Men, dude. Oh, yeah. That, oh, yeah. The face off in the intro was the hardest shit. What was that? Ever. Face off in the oh, intro. Oh, it was the, the, the X Men against like the Magneto. Bad guys, like, coming oh, at each other, like it, it, it was intense. I, I was real upset that Gambit didn't make it in the movies because he yeah. was such a badass the in the fuck? cartoon. He had like he had the uh, the appearance in the one movie and like eh, yeah, and but not whatever. really. They're supposed to make a side Gambit movie, and which would be awesome. Remember, yeah. LeBeau was awesome. Yeah, and they were just like, yeah, whatever. Pat, what was yours? Uh, I was a big fan of G.I. Joe. Yep. Oh, I'm a little oh, bit older than you guys. G.I. Joe. Uh, He's the real American hero. Well, my, <laughs> my brother had a lot of the toys, so like I was fired. Oh, yeah. I love the cartoon. Too. Had the yeah. toys. So I my was brother was a He-Man. I think we, 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 I was Your just brother was He-Man? <laughs> <laughs> Holy <laughs> like, shit. Was he main character? <laughs> Does that make you She-Ra? <laughs> Do you know Gwildor personally? <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. I, I, I also really liked Thundercats. Oh, yeah, yeah Thundercats Thunder was legit. Go. The Sword of Omen. Uh, thunder. 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 Thundercats. Ho! Perfect. Nailed it. <laughs> I felt like that guy in the soccer games. He's like, go! I, I, I was also going to go with Hacksaw Jim Duggan. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so though most cartoons, at least in the 80s and 90s, were made to appeal to a younger demographic, 
What happens when the magic of a cartoon begins to capture and hold the attention of older generations? Well, now new at 10, you probably sit with your kids sometimes when they watch cartoons. But we're about to introduce you to a group of grown men and women who are obsessed with one particular cartoon, My Little Pony. I'm not talking about the toys or shows from the 80s and 90s. This is a phenomenon that blew up only in the last three years. And thanks to the internet, the fans are literally worldwide. You heard it right. My Little Pony. MLP. You down with MLP? Yeah, you, you know, know me. me. <laughs> Sad thing is, we, we, we didn't practice that. We really that. Show, our age, show our age rate with that. <laughs> <laughs> so the term fandom, which I recently learned how to say, is a subculture comprised of people who share a common interest. So the men, or bros, who like My Little Ponies are referred to as bronies. Any idea what the females caught up in this little fandom are called? Uh, yes, but I'd rather not say. Uh, Pat, what is it? Uh, are they? they are Pegasus. They are Pegasus. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so, uh, so, so to understand how we got here, we need to start from the beginning. The creation of MLP began as a toy created by a woman named Bonnie Zacherly. Right here in good old America. Growing up, Bonnie wasn't into dressing up baby dolls. She, much like Pat, always wanted a pony growing up. Did she not have a dad either? <laughs> she, she may have had a dad. I don't, I don't You know, I had a, at my like fourth birthday party, I had a pony show up. And? The coolest what? shit. Show up? Like, like unplanned? No, like, like, my, you had, no, like, wait, like, like my mom booked a pony that showed Hold on. So you had a pony and a dad? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> I'd have killed for either one of those. <laughs> <laughs> but she didn't want a fake one. She wanted a real one. She took that childhood desire and turned it into creativity. In the 1970s, she did freelance work for Hasbro, then eventually took them up on a full-time gig. She kept pushing this idea of a tiny horse with a brushable mane and tail, but Hasbro kept shutting it down until 1981 came along, and then filling up the shelves was a 10-inch pony called Darius... Applejack. <laughs> Wow. <laughs> that was, so that was pretty intense. I was going for My Little Pony. Would you say that? My Little Pony. It's actually wrong. It's My Pretty Pony. That's how it started. They were cute, but bland. But they, they, were, but they were pretty. But they, they were little, too. Right? They, were pretty, they were tiny, yes. But um, this is the way Bonnie wanted it, because it was more lifelike. But Hasbro decided to add some color, a little more pizzazz, and rename the franchise My Little Pony. You remember the commercials? That was my ringtone for a while. <laughs> <laughs> and at the time, they were right. There wasn't anything like it around. And the ads were everywhere. Advertising is always based on targeting. Why waste time and money to appeal to an audience you predict won't give a shit about what you're selling? MOP's target demographic was mainly girls aged 2 to 7. Oh, so our demographic. Exactly. Now, this is why bronies were so unexpected. Nobody saw the bronies coming. They're not ashamed to love a bright pink mane. I speak, of course, of bronies, otherwise known as a growing number of men in love with the show My Little Pony. Yes, that My Little Pony. Wired.com reports that since the reboot of the classic 80s cartoon debuted last fall, it's attracted a massive amount of male viewers. The fanboys have taken to creating pony art, posting fan videos on YouTube, and creating blogs dedicated to the show. So the television series My Little Pony and Friends came out in 1986. They were pretty much always around, but their popularity dropped significantly until about 2010, when the reboot show, My Little Pony, Friendship is Magic, came out. And now they've done a hostile takeover of the girls' toy section in every store nationwide. But what is it about the characters of the show that make it so appealing? So before the show, we were all assigned one of the main characters that we were supposed to learn a little about. Let's see if we did our homework. Steve, who is that adorable little pony you're holding? Uh, My name is Pat. <laughs> <laughs> Pat, get off his lap. <laughs> this, sorry, this right here is Fluttershy. Yeah. What does she look like? She's got a like a pale yellow body skin to her. She uh, has a like a heart tattoo on her leg. Some butterflies on her buttocks. Buttocks. Yeah, and she's got a flowing mane of pink. Hair. So there's a rumor going around that some of the bronies actually find her sexually attractive. Uh, are you sexually attracted to her at all? I'm not. The, I'm why not is it in your lap then? <laughs> 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 it was a test. <laughs> 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 
just for a second. Yeah, just sure. see how it feels. I was like, <laughs> once once sure. he started saying that, I was like, you know what? Maybe I'll see. And I was like, no. Hey. Yeah, I'll, I'll swipe left. Why no, not? Yeah. <laughs> you definitely have to make sure. Okay, so we know about Fluttershy. Darius, who's your pony? Uh, uh, you oh, know what? Oh, oh. You forgot. <laughs> Shutterfly re- represents the uh, element of kindness. Kindness? Uh, oh, well, that's adorable. Yeah. I mean, it makes sense that she takes care of the animals. Absolutely. That is yeah. nice. That is nice. That's kind. Darius, who's your, what's the name of your pony? The name of my pony is Applejack. Applejack. Hey, before, Applejack. You, before you tell us anything else about Applejack, I just want to play uh, just a clip from uh, just an old, old show. British accent? Yeah, Darius, let's hear your British accent. This ought to be good. I don't, I don't think I have a British accent, well, but I'll give it a time. chance. Yeah, time. Apparently, well, the mic's on me right now. I'm in the hot seat on the British accent, yeah. Wow. <laughs> I didn't know the accent actually changed the word. <laughs> also, Brits had many more syllables than it's we ever expected. <laughs> British accent. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so uh, so you now. you want me to try that again? <laughs> so no, 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 no. Darius, you. I'm sorry, Applejack. Tell me about Applejack. Applejack. Tell me about Applejack. It's just as funny today as it was. Then. Uh, <laughs> tell me about Applejack. Applejack, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> she is uh, quite tan uh, here. She has blonde hair. She has um, no wings compared to Steve's pony, and she represents the element of honesty. Honesty. Now, what does she do? She's a farmer. Is that what you said? Earlier, so her residence, um, she's in a sweet apple acres, sweet and apple she acres. is a farmer. Farmer. So she kind of gets apples, and then she also has little apple decorations in her uh, hair and on her side of her body and stuff like that. Got it. So actually, if you've ever watched the show, there's Applejack has a bit of a southern accent. Ac- it's pronounced accent. Okay. <laughs> oh, <laughs> yeah. I see where I, this is going. Yeah, I was kind of hoping you could maybe give us a sample, maybe uh, tell... Steve, that he's a pretty pony, and maybe your southern accent, your best southern accent. Oh my god, I can't wait for this. <laughs> hey there, Fluttershy. Nice to meet you. My name is Applejack. <laughs> <laughs> listen, listen, you guys are laughing. That is so much better than his British <laughs> accent. That was the best. Uh, Darius, southern don't, accent. Don't, don't listen to him. You nailed it. <laughs> Dude, man, I'm so proud of you, buddy. <laughs> I'm so happy you're back. That is absolutely amazing. <laughs> okay, so we know about Fluttershy. We know about Applejack. Pat, who's your pony? Uh, my pony is Rainbow Dash. Okay. Of course it is. Uh, so everyone's has an element, right? We have the element of, of uh, was it, uh, Steve, what was yours? Honesty. Kindness. Kindness. <laughs> Wait, I just, Wait. I just talked to the bottle. <laughs> <laughs> I just talked to the bottle. So you can't see this podcast, like but he you, was talking into his beer. It sounded like you said butthole there, Steve. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe you could turn that pony around. He he does have the attractive (laughs) pony. I talked into the bottle of beer. I knew you liked Fluttershy. I I could tell you liked Fluttershy. Oh, God. The element of my pony is is kindness. Kindness. And the element of Honesty. 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 Hold on. Fluttershy is trying to mount Rainbow Dash as we speak. Uh, This is half of my internet history right here. (laughs) Leave her alone. (laughs) Leave Brittany alone. (laughs) So, Pat, who is your pony? Uh, Rainbow Dash. Rainbow Dash. And she represents the element of loyalty. Loyalty. Uh, She's actually a Pegasus, and her job is she maintains the weather... (laughs) And clears the skies in Ponyville. Wait, 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 she's a Pegasus. Everyone else is a pony. What's the difference? Uh, uh, she has wings. She can fly. Oh, all right. Um, uh, along Fluttershy has a Pegasus also. Oh, you have two Pegasus. Well, yeah. but is your Pegasus a member of the Wonderbolts? Oh. oh. Probably not. Because Rainbow Dash so. is. Uh, not sh- everybody wants to have sex with your pony, though. I'm just saying. Yeah. Well, then I'm not everyone. She's, re- <laughs> she's ready for you. She's ready for you. I mean, she's blue. Her hair. Wait for it. Is rainbow colored? What? And really? She has a tattoo on her hindquarters of a cloud with a rainbow lightning man's bolt. Man, said hindquarters. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't know what you want me to call it. I, I said buttocks. <laughs> <laughs> I spoke into the butthole. All right, um, but ho- but hold on. She also has a pet. She has a pet tortoise whose name is Tank. The pony has a pet tortoise. Sure does. Got oh. it from Steve's pony, actually. Uh, what? Yeah, because she takes care of all the animals. Well, not if she's giving it away to this pony. Yeah, well, she's got her own pets to take care of. <laughs> it's a little oh. menage. Wait, you have pets that your yeah. pony has pets too? Angel the bunny. Bunny? Yes. They got a bunny and a, and a 
turtle. That rabbit is dynamite. And what is your, your so Applejack just, just does what? Mine just hangs out at home and Apple gets Jack's apples out of yeah. the tree for a grandma. Applejack's just like, yo, I don't have time for this shit. You know, she just sits there and gets all the apples. <laughs> Sean, who's your pony? Hmm. <laughs> I should have done the research. Oh, I wow. Should have. Oh. Wow. I should have. So you did not do the research. I didn't. But why do the research when you can hear it right from the horse's mouth? Stop it. <laughs> Hi. Uh, Ms. Sparkle. Ms. Sparkle, can you hear us? Hiya, Weekend Superheroes. Sure I'm glad to be here for your brony episode. <laughs> I'm glad you could be here, too. We actually called you during the Swingers episode, but it went straight to voicemail. Hey, could you tell everyone who you are and what you do? Gladly. I'm Twilight Sparkle, ruler of Friendship Rainbow Kingdom and the princess of friendship. Uh, Wow. (laughs) Twilight Sparkle from My Little Pony. Didn't know I was in the presence of royalty. Uh, But I have some bad news for you, Twilight. Uh, you're, You're not a pony. You're a goddamn unicorn. Actually, Pat, because I have wings too, I am what's called an alicorn. It's a mixture between a unicorn and Pegasus. So, what not make you a horsefly? Okay, he is not allowed to ask any more questions. <laughs> <laughs> and that's how this episode usually goes. Wow! <laughs> hey there, Twilight Sparkle. I'm Steve, and I'm a big fan of tattoos. What uh, does that tribal tattoo on your butt all about? <laughs> Silly Steve, that's my cutie mark. Any pony who's any pony gets one. Each one is unique to our personalities and talents. Do you have a cutie mark, Sean? I, I do, but technically I think all the ponies in Equestria are only about six years old, so legally I, I can't show it to you. Uh, last question, Twilight. Is My Little Pony a girls-only club? Well, gosh, no. Studies show cartoons can help restore optimism and give someone a break from worrying or feeling sad. My Little Pony is for everyone. (laughs) That was a study from 2011. (laughs) (laughs) Twilight Sparkle, thanks for stopping by and telling us your tale. Stop it. (laughs) Fucking hate you. Stop it. Please don't call me again. Okay. (laughs) 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 We won't. This might come as a shock, <laughs> but that wasn't the real Twilight Sparkle. Because, what? Because the real Twilight Sparkle is a cartoon you tricked pony. us. <laughs> that was a voice actress who goes by the name of Wubcake. 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 And she is not in any way associated with Hasbro. Check out her YouTube channel. Just search for Wubcake and a big thank you is that to her. W-U-B-C-A-K-E? That's it. Wubcake. All and right. thank you, Wubcake, for doing that for us. That was so much fun. So dialing back, yes. My Little Pony has its sissy rainbows and lollipop (laughs) moments, but it also has storylines, antagonists, fights, struggles between good and evil, and problem solving, and resolution just like, oh, I don't know, every other cartoon ever. Pat, don't you watch cartoons now as an adult? Uh, Yeah, they're called anime, so they're from Japan, so they're really sophisticated. (laughs) (laughs) So that's okay. (laughs) Steve, uh, South Park? I love it. Best show on TV. Big cartoon. Great. Darius, do you watch any cartoons as an adult? Uh, and yes, hentai, hentai counts. Now, does Family Guy count as a cartoon? Absolutely, it's a cartoon. Because they have a lot of good puns that you do not use on this podcast. <laughs> it's very true. <laughs> it's so Their true. puns are good, actually. <laughs> so I guess the question is, are bronies really that different? Does watching a cartoon geared towards young girls automatically make you girly? Is friendship even really magic? Time to get some answers. Our guest tonight has been involved with My Little Pony fandom for about six years. In the brony world, he's known only as Lucky Knight. And he is the host of a brony trivia show called The Brony House. Coming to us via Skype from the land down under, please welcome Lucky Knight. Lucky Knight, how are you today? Oh, very well, thank you. And it's a good morning to you from the future. (laughs) That song, courtesy of Gabriel Brown, is a theme to Lucky Knight's older show, I'm Brony and I'm Proud. Thanks for coming on the show. Tell us about the first time you were ever blown away by My Little Pony. Oh, man. Uh, it's uh, I, the way I sort of put it, the, the, my, my Brony birth was in April, uh, April 2012. And it, uh, 
it was a time where things were really, really not that good. Um, you know, for for you know for old lucky, uh, well, for old lucky night before I was even known as lucky night. Actually, so, back when you were unlucky and, night. <laughs> yeah, sounds like unlucky night. Yeah, that, you actually that's probably a very apt description, I reckon, for those. <laughs> And um, and yeah, so and what happened was I'd um, I'd revisit an old online community that hadn't touched for, for for many many years, which was the Ret and Link community, and um, I got chatting with an old online friend of mine that hadn't chatted for ages, and and he said uh, he said in the group chat, look, I want to shoot you a message, I want I, I want to show you some stuff, and I'm thinking. Well, this could mean two things, but um, <laughs> it is the internet. <laughs> so, okay, I'd say, well, okay, oh, oh, all right. So he sends me a message He um, not with mu- not much context. Okay, he said to me, watch this first link. And then if you, if you still, if you like what you've heard, watch the second. And then the third. Okay, and the first one was a documentary called Ballad of a Brony by a, a YouTuber called Saber Spark. And I think he was pretty much from the in the fandom from the from the beginning from the get go in 2010, and it's about a one hour documentary that he did as a part of a thesis on subcultures um, oh, wow. at um, at the college he was attending, um, and I watched the whole thing and wow, and then I watched the second and I kept going and <laughs> and now the show is in eight seasons uh, eight seasons um, in total and I think there's oh, wow. a ninth one along the way. Wow, so which like I a, think is it must sounds, be a record for a show of its type. Sounds like getting into this is like a three step program. You got to watch video one, <laughs> <laughs> video two, and then move so, on. so if we have two more podcasts, then we'll be bronies. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> All right. So, so I, yeah, yeah. So I have a question. So this is obviously kind of a little out of the norm. You know, it's a community, like you said, based around a, a cartoon for little girls. You know, were you scared to admit to people that you were a brony? And, and you know, kind of who was the first person you told about it? Um, gosh, the first person I told about it. I I think I kept it down low for a long time. I think until I um, I I started to become a little bit more curious and engaged with the um, Australian brony groups. So on Facebook. So I think the first one I joined was um, Melbourne slash Victoria Bronies and. And I think initially I just I was just um, sort of like your your baseline brony. Oh, I lo- I watch this clip and I'll share it, and I watch this clip and I'll share it, and and I just kept sort of kept doing that, and then eventually I sort of developed a curiosity of what am, am I really a brony? What is a brony? Uh, and I thought, and I was chatting with um with a friend of mine, and um, and I guess who I made through through the group somehow, and he says, well, how how about you do a show or something about it? And I thought. That's a brilliant idea. So I'm not, yeah. So because I thought, well, if I don't know what a Brody is, I will ask the bro. I'll, I'll ask my friends and their friends and see if they know the answer. And it sort of evolved from there. And I, and then I think I think I finally got to the point that I, yeah, then I realized what kind of bro- Brony I was. And generally, there's sort of three categories. You got your sort of, I guess, level one, <laughs> level one Brony, which is you know you, you like the show and. And um, and you just really sort of like it that way. And then you got level two, which is you you like the show, but you're sort of active in the community. You're sharing stuff and, and really engaging and talking to other bronies. And then level three is the is the creative brony. So you're actually creating content and contributing um, to the fandom as a whole and the world, so to speak. So so I think um, I've I think I still fall into that category. So, so um, everything about being a brony comes yeah. in threes. <laughs> yeah, that's what I've gathered too. It's just so you're you're calling yourself a level three brony. You are a brony. Is, yeah, I think I think that's what helps me sleep at night. To be honest, <laughs> well, um, I mean you're on this podcast talking about it. I mean that counts as content, right? Yeah, there we go. Yeah, that's right. So you say you're a level three contributor, uh, but you have to tell us who's your favorite pony. Oh, Rainbow Dash, without question. Whoa, that Rainbow was Dash. Twice. So Rainbow how did Rainbow Dash, Dash win your heart? What what's the big thing about Rainbow Dash? I think her personality resonates with my own the, my own the most. I think, yeah. So, um, I think growing up and stuff, I probably had um, had issues with keeping my ego in check, and I think that's sometimes a problem that some of a, a lot of other people have. But um, that whole element of loyalty thing, I generally, if um, if you're a friend with me, um, you're kind of a friend for life, and um, and for me, the show has been so great because. Um, 
going through school and high school and stuff, even even uni for that matter, um, you sort of it's sort of like the mentality. Okay, let's throw all the kids into the mix, and they're going to, and everyone's going to be buddy buddy. That may be true for the most part who have that sort of have that sort of social knack, but if you're uni- a unique person in any way, or you know, just slightly just left of center, um, it's like so. But really, how? So when I watch the show, it's like, wow, I actually got the friendship education that I didn't, I I never thought that I could get otherwise, and and now the eighth season. I'm not sure if you've seen the. Have you, have you guys seen the eighth season? No, no. no. Okay, I, no, no. It's but. Uh, They've actually developed a friendship school, and oh, I was wow. talking about it for many years. And seeing that on the screen, it's like holy cow! So, I would love, I would love for you know, for friendship to be taught as a subject in schools because it's, um, I think it's an art. And, yeah, it's not, it's and if we look at everyone. you know the world in general, um, it's probably a great school for diplomacy and everything like that. So you never know. So uh, obviously, you're a big fan of the show. Uh, what yeah. kind of like merchandise do you have, and what's like the most expensive that you have? <laughs> Oh, so yes, that's right. It comes down to the merch. So <laughs> it's all about. It's the always merch. No, it's all about the merch, man. <laughs> oh yeah, Hasbro Senpai, we worship you. Um, so, um, sort of my kind of my collection. I think I've got a couple of plushies. Um, the build the build bear kind ones. Um, I think one I one I had made obviously Rainbow Dash because reasons clearly um <laughs> yep and i think then I, someone was selling them off and i got the shining armor one because i thought shining armor is just pretty damn cool because it's like he's like he's one of the most well-developed um stallions of the show and as you as you probably can tell um male male ponies are kind of a minority in equestria so i'm not exactly sure how they um um grow the population we'll just leave <laughs> that to our imaginations yeah and um what else i got i got the Still in its, uh, st- uh, yeah, still in its packaging. I don't know when we're going to get it out. It's the Twilight Sparkle balloon, and you press a button, and music plays, kind of thing. And a um, couple of action figures, couple of limited edition ones, um, but by no means in comparison to some collections that I've seen. Uh, I would say my collection may be on the borderline of five percent of what I've seen of so other birdies wow. have. So, yeah, but. so, 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 uh, so, de- so, some people have poured a lot of money into it. Like, and I remember I, was, I attended my first brony convention, and I think I was only two months into my podcast. Um, and that we, the, the the brony auctions are insane. Like they, I think someone paid, and it was actually a friend of mine who paid eight hundred dollars for a custom made plushie of um, uh, of Coco Mel. Wow. Um, and um, and I think um, the Trevor charity uh, that's with the collaborations going around have raised already two thousand dollars. So there's no there's no limit to the generosity of bronies worldwide. And um, and it was really interesting. I'll never forget the auction. The, the last piece was a fully signed piece by all the cast and crew and everyone. And oh, someone wow. got it for a steal towards the end because everyone went crazy for the plushies. <laughs> I don't know what's with the plushies. So everyone was broke by that point. Bronies just just love them. And, Where's your um, plushie? But, why don't Why don't you have a plushie? Oh, um, I think she's somewhere. Uh, Can we see it? Oh, I think she's in the closet. <laughs> <laughs> it's a private thing, Sean. So lucky night. So the mainstream yes. thought, the mainstream thought is that yeah. My Little Pony is uh, mainly for young girls. How would you defend you and your fellow bronies' right to enjoy this show just like any other cartoon? Right. As a, as a majority, bronies are bright, intelligent, creative people, and we come from all different backgrounds. Um, it's a lot of a lot of college graduates. A lot of um, uh, there's a con- considerable amount that actually work the in the military as well. Um, highly creative, highly intelligent, and and we're fully aware of what of what we're watching. And 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 of course, you know, there's always you know sensationalism. You know, they will try to say, oh, you know, these bronies are just you know um, you know perverts or forty year old virgins living in their basements. That probably is a tiny percentage. Of <laughs> Not a tiny percentage of us at this table. So, <laughs> um, but we're generally good people, and we believe in in good values. And what's and what's cool now is that a lot of people who are bronies at the beginning of the fandom now have their own children, and they're passing on those same values to those kids. So, and then I think I believe it's I, I think it started. It's Lauren Faust, the creator of the show, has really kicks out a chain reaction where um i mean it's a bold statement but yeah bronies could really you know change the world and i think in the, in, the, in our own way as a global community we have 
And um, everyone will always have crit- will always have critics, but uh, but uh, if you you know just take uh, one minute to get to know us, and if we're not pushing the show down your throat, um, <laughs> which was very much the beginning of the fandom, join the herd, join the herd, join the herd, and uh, now we're just like, well, the cool, you know, like if you you watch one episode, no matter what episode, it's you know if you like it, you like it; if you don't, you don't. And yeah, and sort of grows from there. So I I'm really proud. Uh, <laughs> to um to be to have um stumbled into it however i did and yeah i think overall you know good intelligence i think and yeah if you take just a couple of minutes to to get to know one of us i think uh you know pretty quickly that uh, we're pretty awesome <laughs> <laughs> amen all right so i've heard some things about <laughs> some bronies that maybe want to have a little bit more than a magic friendship with uh fluttershy what the What's happening there? I see you're, <laughs> you're kind of laughing a little bit. <laughs> well, there is there for every fandom there is the R thirty four, the dark side of the fandom, and um, <laughs> so yeah, if um, it's the internet, and if you think there's a version of your a version of a pony or any kind of character, yeah, there is one, and uh, yeah, and um, you know some people do it. Um, also, it's actually quite a bit. It's fully a decent chunk that makes a lot of money in the fandom as well for people making those requests. So, <laughs> yeah. So, uh, so lucky. So, though, be uh, honest. So, have you have you thought about it yourself? Thought about myself in what way? Have you thought about <laughs> it yourself? Have you thought about <laughs> Fluttershy oh, in that way? No, 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 no. Uh, no, bestiality is not something that comes to mind. <laughs> look, look, listen. I'm not here to judge. If your junk doesn't wiggle yeah. just a little bit when you look at Jessica Rabbit, you're just a crazy oh. person. Yeah. yeah, Jessica Rabbit. <laughs> All right. I'd, I'd be, okay, I'd be lying if I didn't say a tiny bit. There yeah. we go. Jessica. Hey. <laughs> got it out of me, guys. You got it out Jessica of me. Jessica Rabbit was hot. <laughs> yeah. I, I, figure, I, I figure if anybody doesn't admit that, you know, that tiny bit of a possibility, yeah, so yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Why but Fluttershy? It why is it Fluttershy? Uh, why is it Fluttershy? Yeah. Oh, my wife. Oh my gosh. I think it really was the um, it was the season finale of season one that did it for me. I think that oh. um, she is, she's quiet and you know very timid and kind um all the time, but if you really push her to a corner, she becomes this wild child, and that's what it was revealed in that sort of season finale. So I think. I don't know. Maybe that's just that's what kind of woman I'm looking for. That's but, so um, hot. I almost took my shirt off. Just you saying that. That's crazy. <laughs> please, please don't. <laughs> yeah. Like so, um, but of course, well, if if anyone's fantasizing about getting with one of those with one of the main six, or it's technically main seven, it's technically main eight now. If you're combining all the alternate universes oh, that are now available, too many. Um, like we always Star try to envision now. ourselves as ponies as we go in. So I think that's where the OC stuff comes as well. It's not a, it's not the main part of that, but yeah. So yeah. <laughs> So I have to ask this question because we're in Pittsburgh. So in Pittsburgh, yeah. I mean, it's on the same area, maybe not, but we have this convention called the Furry Convention. Yeah. But you touched upon it a little bit earlier. You called it the, the Brony Convention. So what goes on there? Because I'm curious if it's sort of similar to uh, what we have here in Pittsburgh as a furry convention. Right. Furries are the bronies. So uh, some furries are bronies, um, but furries have been around long before bronies have come into the picture. Right. I think that sort of that sort of um, escapism into you know being this sort of anthropomorphic sort of version of yourself, or just or just a different character altogether. I, I I like to see the woman fuzzy side. It's like you know like you know that in this world where you know there's sort of very material and sometimes you know other you know other sorts of world that that sort of escape into this sort of almost nature's type of aspect. Um, there's some parts of the furry stuff where it may just get a little too out there for me, but um, I, I like maybe just the, the face value stuff. And, you know, when you see someone dressed up in their full sort of furry getup, um, even if it's just a head and, you know, you see a little girl, a little boy or a little girl, you know, go for a hug kind of thing. That's the furry side that I like the most because, you know, you're, you're promoting a sort of this warm and sort of fuzzy sort of sort of caring character. Um, unless they are very quick to reveal their, their character's backstory. Which can vary from from very yeah. very cute to, uh-huh. to probably even, even violent. And stuff. <laughs> some weird shit. That's awesome. All right, so I I have one last question. So um, 
there obviously is probably a good bit of negativity that can come along with being a brony. So, you know, yeah. you mentioned it that people think that, you know, you're all 40 year old virgins living in your mom's basement and, you know, you're kind of just pervert. Well, that's and, what yeah, Fox yeah. and Friends say, but they, well, yeah, of course. <laughs> well, no one should listen to them, but anyway. <laughs> um, so, so, how do you deal with that? Like, you know, when someone finds out you're a brony and they kind of oh. give you that look, like, how do you deal with it? I, I think the toughest for me was uh, eventually telling my family. I think uh, telling my brothers and my mom. Oh, yeah, brothers mom. especially. And I, I, and I honestly, when you talk like that, you think, oh, gosh, he's coming out of the closet. It's like, and I'm as, <laughs> I'm as head of as it comes. Um, and, um, and I think, uh, what was it? My, my younger brother, um, I'm the eldest of three sons, and um, he actually watched the, the first three seasons. And I thought, holy crap, you did? Wow. Sweet. So, you know, just to <laughs> see what it's about. I think my youngest brother, he's like, he accepts it. And my mom is like, uh, can we just watch something else? If I'm caught <laughs> watching something related on, on the big screen TV for the Chromecast. So um, in terms of neg- negativity from the general public, uh, my uh, my brony detector, as I call it, I've got this cool T-shirt, which has the, the pixel versions, like 8-bit pixel versions of the, of the, of the, um, of the, of the cutie marks or or as we call our uh, butt tattoos um, of the main <laughs> six. So, um, and if anyone comes up to me and say, "Oh, hey, are you a prony?" I know that's right. So it's like, otherwise it looks like a really cool T-shirt. So, so, um, so yeah. So oh, like nice. subtle brony detector. That's awesome. That's cool. All right. I don't know if you guys have anything else. Um, Lucky night. You've been amazing. Uh, and I know that you are a fan of trivia because you've got your own show. Uh, I was wondering, we have our own little game called Factor Fucked at the end of every uh, episode. Do you want to play? <laughs> Love it! <laughs> <laughs> he's in. He's definitely in. Factor Fucked! Number one. The linguistic blend of words such as brony, in which two or more words are combined into a new word, is called portmantia. That's a fact. Lucky night? I'm going to say Fact. Fact it is. And it's pronounced oh. portmanteau. Oh. Portmanteau? It's hard. Oh, okay. Yeah. Oh. Uh, Using those big words. Those big words. <laughs> <laughs> it's the only big word I have on here. The rest aren't that big. <laughs> what, what you don't see is he's reading it, and it's actually spelled out phonetically on the paper. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Other examples include smog, brunch, sitcom, and infomercial. True story. Steve. Hi. There is an enzyme in the blood of the horseshoe crab that, when in contact with human skin, will dissolve it faster than most acids. Fucked. Fucked. <laughs> Lucky night. <laughs> That's some serious shit right there. <laughs> <laughs> oh, gosh. Oh. Oh, why not? Fuck. Fucked it is. Nice yeah. job. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Two for two. Let's go. All right. All right. Darius. The Purple Horseshoes didn't make it into General Mills' Lucky Charm cereal until 1983. Uh, fact. Fact. Lucky night. That's weird because that's the year I was born. Uh, <laughs> so, wow. Do 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 do. Yeah. Do, do. <laughs> we have now entered the bronies. <laughs> <laughs> I need your answer. Um. Uh. Fact. Why not? Fact it is. You guys are yeah, killing it, it right now. Oh, yeah. It has to be a right. fact. I never get it on the first one. I'm proud of you. You never get it on the second one either, Gary. <laughs> 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 Three more and I'll let you go. Okay. Uh, Pat. 1998's Goodbye Horses by Q. Lazarus was a dark ode to his adoptive parents' fatal car crash the year prior. I know it's what Wild Bill dances to. Goodbye. Odd foot. the on the skin. <laughs> uh... Oh, what was the year you said? 1998. Then I'm going to say fucked. Fucked. Yeah, I was going to say that too. Lucky night. You know I'm going to say I'm going to say fucked because I've never heard that song at all. So yeah, there you go. It's fucked. Nice job. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm pretty sure Silence of the Lambs is older than 1998. Yeah, I was going to say that's that's way older than that. <laughs> Actually, I think the year was right. Um, uh, <laughs> the other stuff I made up. Steve. Oh boy. The term horsepower was coined in 1781 by James Watt to conceive skeptics to ditch their horses and buy his new invention, the steam engine. Did you say horse power or horse? Horse. Horse power. Horse power. Okay. Your mother's a horse. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to say fact. Fact. Lucky night. 
what's throwing me is a whole Watt thing because Watt's to do light bulbs and stuff like that. So, yeah. and it's James Watt W A T T as well. So. Factor fucked. We do so well. Yeah, we do so well so far. I've got the threes and threes already. Um, ah. Oh. We know what happens in threes. You're done. You're done up to three. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, let's go facts. Fact it is. It you guys oh are God. murdering it. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Boom. <laughs> <laughs> um, not to put any pressure on Darius, but we've never had a perfect round. Oh, this is. Thanks. Fact. Uh, <laughs> it is true. <laughs> All right. <Fact>. Hey. <laughs> All right. Darius. Seahorses have no teeth, dum, no dum, stomach, and must dum, eat dum, constantly to stay alive. Dum, dum. You said seahorses? Seahorses. They're all horse-related. I don't know if you've noticed that. <laughs> fucked. <laughs> fucked. Lucky night? I don't know. Yeah. I'm going to say fucked. That is fact. Oh! Oh! Damn it, Darius. I almost had a sweep. We're so close. Oh, sorry, crap. I wanted to say fact. Oh, no. <laughs> i tell you what. Hold on. Just, just, can we go back and just oh, have them say you fact? You got me enjoy cursing. <laughs> And that's our show, every pony. Huge thank you to every Lucky Pony for, <laughs> for coming on the show and killing it with those answers. Check out his YouTube channel. I'm Brony and I'm proud and the Brony House for more MLP fun. Also, my personal research has taught me that the Bronies are big supporters of the LGBTQ community. If you have a moment, please support the Trevor Project. It's a nonprofit charity that provides crisis and suicide prevention services for young people in the LGBTQ world. In fact, in lieu of our outro music, what you're hearing right now is a huge collaboration of bronies and Pegasisters singing You Will Be Found in honor of the Trevor Project movement. I'll put the donate link in the show notes. Find out more at, I'm not joking, youwillbefound.horse. That's a real website. You will be found dot horse. Dot horse. It's a real website. <laughs> you go there. <laughs> Lucky night. Would you like to say goodbye to everyone who loves you? Bye bye, everypony. <laughs> 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 if you'd like to hear more episodes like this one, check us out at weekendsuperheroes.com. You can find us on iTunes, YouTube, Spreaker, Stitcher, or wherever you get your podcast. Keep up with the superheroes on Facebook and Twitter. Just search, search for the Weekend Superheroes. Pat, would you like to you say goodbye? You better for that. <laughs> Good night, ponies. <laughs> would you like to say goodbye, I Steve? Can't, can't <laughs> He's got anything. nothing. There is. I'm going to have to say goodbye to the ponies. And I apologize to the seahorses. <laughs> 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 Good night, everybody. And always remember to podcast responsibly. Bronies, hit it. When you need someone to carry you When you're broken on the ground